So we hear the Lunar Connect and the who are you? Uh, I'm Seth Sarup. I'm the uh, applications engineer at 96 Boards along with Money. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm uh, Robert Wolf, 96 Boards community manager and engineer. Uh, so what are you talking about right here? So today we'll be talking about the Mezzanine Community Initiative. It's a uh, open and collaborative initiative uh, and organized by the community and managed by the community. It's to bring open hardware spec uh, mezzanines onto the 96 boats platform. So if you want to see what a mezzanine looks like, this is a mezzanine uh, and this is a 96 boards and they usually just uh, yeah plug in like that and give you additional functionality on your 96 boards uh, development platform and they are compatible with the consumer edition and consumer edition extended specs. Yes. So, so what does it mean to do a community around this? So the idea was to get a bunch of people together who are really interested in open hardware uh, to provide lots and lots of mezzanine to the ecosystem and uh, while doing that even promote open hardware and open source. Uh, yeah, so it's led by Michael Welling, uh, the community, uh, he's a very well known open source hardware engineer. Uh, and he kind of maintains our uh, amazing initiative. Uh, Robert and I do our best to maintain the community side of things. And we have a meeting every second week at 4 p.m. UTC. So you can go ahead on to our uh, 96 boards GitHub page and uh, check out Me mezzanine community repository uh, that has all the info where we meet and what we discuss. So, um, yeah. Uh, so who would be in the community? Is it the, the, the companies that make mezzanine boards or is it the people so that use them? So it's both. So there are individuals who are interested in doing that, there are universities who are interested in doing that, and even companies uh, sometimes join the call to kind of, you know, um, check out what people want because we have a issue list that discusses what mezzanines are not available yet and what's the demand for them. So uh, even companies like to some, uh, sometimes go around and take a look at uh, what the ecosystem really needs at this moment. Yeah, so uh, issue tracking and version control allow us to basically keep kind of all of our thoughts organized as a community and as an ecosystem. Uh, we try to look at what the community wants, right? And since we are a partner-based company, 96 Boards and Lenaro, um, we are always looking for ways. We are always looking for ways uh, to, you know, help our partners find out what the next mezzanine should be, right? And you can kind of see uh, a pattern, right? And as uh, you know, whether whether our partners uh, believe it or not, uh, you know, consume it, the the community seems to be. Uh, seeding these uh, these ideas, you know, you start to see things like this um, Shear Tech um, LTE mezzanine or narrowband mezzanine, um, and then uh, you also start to see things like the uh, Arrow. If, if you went down to the Arrow booth here at Lenaro Connect, you will have also seen a new mezzanine for uh, a screen. Was it LCD screen? Right. Mm -hmm. This is all. These are all things that were brought up in this mezzanine community far long ago, and so. Um, uh, it, it seems that we are hopefully helping our partners and decide what, what mezzanine should be next. But not only that, um, the community has also taken charge and tried to make some of their own mezzanines. And while we don't have any of them here to show, unfortunately, uh, we have uh, seen some mezzanines come out of the community, such as another LTE mezzanine, which was built by some folks in Brazil, and then um, a GPS mezzanine, a proto mezzanine, and I think a few others. Um, I think it's important to note here, though, that in this community, right, um, we're not just kind of throwing to the wolves. We are actually providing you with some of the bare essentials, some of the, the you know, fine-tuned tools that you need to get started. So inside this repository, uh, we give you several templates, including an Altium template, an Eagle template, and a KiCad template. Uh, though the repository is not limited to these, so if someone is out there and would like to work with another type of CAD, um, uh, software, then we would gladly accept your templates so that the community can start developing on those and contribute back. There are, however, a lot of things we are continuing to work on, right? Like we want to yeah. start, you know, putting some guidelines forward. How do you choose a license to put on to your board, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe Saj can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so the licensing was one of the biggest discussion mm -hmm. we had before we uploaded any boards or started working on any boards. And the conclusion, conclusion we came to was everyone 
uh, wants to kind of tune and own their own hardware uh, and have their own license, open source license. Uh, so what we do is the uh, the repository as a whole has a common license but we allow each individual design to have their own open hardware license and the templates are completely open yeah the templates are completely open. yeah so you don't need technically you could go consume our templates and never come back but we would hope you do <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, w what is this community I'm looking at here, for example? Yeah, so this is the GitHub repository where Ooh, sorry, we that's host, your phone. <laughs> where we host the whole community yeah. and... So, that's that's online? Yeah. It's, it's right on here GitHub. at uh, GitHub? Yeah. Yeah, so it should say github.com forward slash 96 boards forward slash mezzanine dash community. And then uh, what goes on there, all the stuff you were talking about? So uh, on the main readme page, you'll see most of the things. Uh, so for example, yeah, we have our contribution guidelines detailed in the contribution doc. If you open that up, uh, we have uh, our meeting and notes section. So we maintain issues uh, regarding meeting notes as well. And you can see where we meet. It's an open meeting, so anyone can join. Uh, and we have acknowledgments for people who have contributed very heavily to the community. And uh, yeah, so if you go into the issues section, for example, you can see we have all of our meeting agendas as well as mezzanine ideas. So if you have any mezzanine idea, you can just uh, add that and we link that in. So there's actually pretty much more there. Yeah, and so um, there are different levels of contribution, right? And we've been discussing this as, you know, let's call it the Mezzanine Community Committee. But we've been discussing, you know, whether or not it is, it, it is necessary to contribute a, an entire layout to the repository, right? Because um, all in all, if you had the layout files, if you had the, the actual layout, then you could go get this board made and then, you know, put your board together yourself, assemble it, or however you want to go about doing it. Now, um, that is basically giving everyone everything, right? So we have kind of discussed this and thought, you know, there, there, there is still a way for the mezzanine community to benefit someone who uses it uh, without having to give away your entire layout. And what you could do is by providing schematics and getting feedback from the community, you can also make your mezzanine a lot more robust. And so this is also an important way to use this. And we've talked about splitting off sections of this by now you can contribute boards, but you can also contribute schematics. And this is something we might be launching in the coming year to allow a more um, you know, community-based review process in, uh, in your process to uh, releasing a mezzanine, a community-based mezzanine. Now, one other thing I'll add to this is that uh, we have been in talks and we've tried this, uh, getting boards funded in low quantities, right? This is uh, an issue that um, a lot of people may have. And to do this, We've been talking with a company called Group Gets. Group Gets, similar to uh, you know Kickstarter, Indiegogo, uh, GoFundMe, um, it's a way to get projects funded, right? But the difference between Group Gets and some of these other places is that Group Gets doesn't allow you to seek funding for vaporware. The only thing, or an idea, let's just call it an idea. You can't get funded for an idea there. You get funded for a finished product. So you have to at least prove that you have something that exists. You know, you print it out, you get it done the first round, at least one or two. You prove that it exists, you go through the testing, you prove that it works. And then if you want to do a run on that to lower your prices, then you can do a run with group gets and they will uh, take care of all of that for you in a very nice, a very nice way. They'll even uh, try to get things shipped for you. This isn't a pitch for group cats, but if you do have a chance, you should definitely go check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff going on over there. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so uh, one of the big things, uh, the big promises, and the big uh, potential uh, huge revolution that could come out of the 96 boards is potentially a whole bunch of mezzanine boards. Yeah. So people can start expanding a whole bunch of different things. And Sh ShareTech is showing yeah. amazing five different? What? No, yeah, there's seven. seven. Yeah, so there will be more. There will be more. I think uh, here they have five. Um, uh, showcasing five of them but <clears throat> one of the cool things about this and uh, you know you mentioned like mezzanines <coughs> and the community right the these boards uh, some of the boards that they have so far are literally just plug and play you know and when we start getting into a situation where more of our partners uh, work on upstreaming their their components and their 
yeah. their sensors, uh, their chipsets, then you start finding that you know the mezzanine companies, the manufacturers, uh, the people who are building these mezzanines are going to end up putting those de those particular devices on their. They're going to end up putting their particular devices, uh, those devices on their uh, mezzanines, right? That makes it easier for the user to bring it up. Um, and then, uh, of course, easier to uh, then create a product out of it. So the path to product becomes a lot uh, more solid. So it's just plug and play. This it's one is literally plug and play. Yeah. On any of these? Uh, not yeah. I wouldn't, uh, on most of them, right? On any of these, if they're on Debian, it's plug and play. Because the... Uh, you guys any of these that yeah. are showing, yes. They rooted all of the LTE stuff by USB, and we have USB in the high-speed connector. So it just works. Oh, that's true, yeah, yeah. It just works. Yeah. So um, then, you basically, for example, that one, you add uh, LTE to any board. Yeah. And some sensors and stuff. Yeah, they yeah. have in this one. And they have a fast LTE and a more like a NBIOT NBI LTE. So yeah, this is the NBIOT one. And uh, potentially, you suddenly you turn this into uh, something that you can just drop somewhere. Well, yeah, it's doing stuff. Yeah, well, we're talking about turning, um, you know, turning a '96 board. It's like you know, like I'll just show you, right? Like I'm gonna plug this in right now, but. Um, if I then took this 96 boards, uh, we're talking about, I'm going to hopefully be demoing this for ARM TechCon, but don't quote me on it. Hopefully it makes it there. Um, the, uh, a 96 boards gateway, uh, on a base station with a LTE mezzanine. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be collecting the LTE signal and then pushing it out through a USB to ethernet port and then feeding that LTE signal to another device, um, a, a, uh, somewhat of like a server hub so that you can get, um, LTE signal, um, anywhere there's, so you can get LTE signal out from your gateway to any device you want. Now, uh, the, the interesting thing about this particular project is that it's completely off the grid. So we'll be running this on a solar, uh, self-sustainable solar base station. And if you are at Arm TechCon, October 17th through October 18th, definitely cruise by the Innovator Station, um, Innovator Booth, and we'll be showcasing that 96 boards, Sheertech LTE, and um, and hopefully um, creating a server out of that on a self-sustainable solar station developer station what what do you uh, envision or, or imagine could could be happening with all these mezzanines what could it's going to be some whole bunch of killer killer features killer I, i'll show you i'll show you and this was here it was dimming downstairs is um shoot. is it the um what's it called the uh, it's uh this is what i call a five layer cake oh the super stack yeah five yeah cake. so all of those boards are just stacked over I don't know. I think it's a dragon board, and each one of them just works. Uh, so this is kind of what we are pushing towards: is stackable mezzanine. So you can just have a very customizable setup. Uh, just buy the mezzanine you want to add that particular functionality. To prototype IoT ideas. Yeah. And then the next step is how do they get into mass production? Just talk with some. Yeah. So yeah. we actually have. Um, a group of partners who are very interested in this path. Um, it's almost like the gray area or that one missing link on your way from prototyping, developing, and then actually getting into production. But the question isn't really that, right? Because at, there is a certain turning point when you're developing on a, on a, let's just say any single board computer, a development platform can still be um, surprisingly efficient cost-wise until you reach a certain number, right? So with, let's just say that turning point is 10,000 units. At 10,000 units, you might want to start entertaining, um, you know, creating your own design, knocking off a USB port to save a few cents here and there, right? These are the kind of things that our partners want to help you with, getting your derivative design out there. And um, if you go explore the 96boards.org website, you can go to our about section, you can explore, see all of our different partners, and then hopefully in the near future, we will be launching um, a section of the 96 board site that allows you to have a more direct link with the partners that are geared towards helping you on this path. So um, if you do, uh, you know, follow us on 96 boards Twitter at 96 boards, um, you can keep up with these types of updates. We do try to, you know, keep that fairly uh, current. I think we're posting like every day now. So um, anything new that happens, we post. Um, any types of announcements like this, we will also be posting. And in the future, there might be some new cool uh, ARM processors that, that could get into 96 boards and all kinds of stuff that might come. The, the all this machine learning stuff. So so new boards that are on the on the on the on the way out. Yes. So um, I, I can't give you any hints on those, but I will say 
that we do have quite the long list of boards that are coming. Um, this is, uh, I, as far as I can tell right now, it's not going anywhere. Uh, it's not going away. If anything, we're just getting more, we're just getting, we're gearing up for a, a, a nice storm in 2019. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on and we hope that you know the community can continue to grow and engage with us on this as we do grow. Um, we will be focusing a little bit more as you know, we, the video with Monty over here, um, he is gonna be gearing up for uh, more uh, upstream work, hopefully helping our partners to get more uh, engaged with um, uh, with this type of, of effort. And then, uh, yeah, I, I guess I, I don't wanna talk too much about it, but yeah, there are a lot of boards coming up. Yeah. Cool. All right. Awesome. Okay. So see you next time. Thank you.